Hello, and welcome to Insano's Games' quick tutorial guide on how to improve your World of Warcraft game's performance. Let's look at increasing the frames per second as much as we can without detracting from the appearance of the game, and let's also look at reducing the load time as much as we can. I don't think you like sitting uh, staring at a loading bar for too long if you're anything like me. I'm also running a fresh install of the game with no add-ons, so I won't have anything on here f aside from the base game that might detract from the game's performance. Let's go ahead and enter into Stormwind here on my Paladin. Alright. Now I'll pop up the frames per second, which are hovering in the 67 range it appears. <coughs> I'll quickly show you, I'm running everything on the highest they can go. Highest anti-aliasing, graphics quality maxed, about the highest um, resolution, and no limits on my frames per second, etc. Just everything is at its max. Now, I'm up here on this overlook, over overseeing uh, the mage district here, just because this is a nice static area where not much changes so I won't see too much swing in the result if I were, say, in the trade district with tons of players around. Now, one of the biggest effects, well, a few of the biggest effects I'll show you here won't detract from the appearance of the game, from all the texture details and whatnot, by too much. Let's go ahead and look at reducing shadow quality. This one won't be as huge where I am currently, but in an area full of NPCs and players and whatnot, it would make a bigger difference. But let's go ahead and turn this down to good and see what happens. Now, as you can see, the frame rate is now around 70. We've gone up a few. It would be a bigger effect in a more populated area. Liquid detail can be very hefty on your on your graphics processor. Graphics processors suffer more when they try to render anything that moves or has reflections or anything of the sort like that, like that comes as baseline with water or even metallic surfaces. So you don't need to be on ultra. We could put that down to fair if you don't if you absolutely don't mind your water not looking super duper pretty. So if we were to go ahead and do that, we've already jumped around 83. That's a good improvement from 67. But a large one can be the high, um, the advanced lighting effects. Lighting quality will also help, but SSAO will be a much larger improvement. Let's go ahead and turn that down to good and see what happens. We have now jumped to the mid-90s, from around the mid-60s. That is almost... We're looking at around a 25 to 30 frames per second increase. That alone should already make your game much more playable. Another big one is anti-aliasing. What anti-aliasing does, if you don't know, is that it removes or smooths jagged edges. That's the bulk of what anti-aliasing does. If you have, say, a round object that you're looking at with no anti-aliasing, it'll look a little bit like a saw blade almost. It'll have a lot of jagged edges. Whereas with anti-aliasing, it smooths them out and renders them better, adds a lot more pixels and whatnot, so it can be harder on your processor. You don't need to remove it entirely, but I find that CMAA can be a nice balance for you if your processor isn't quite up to snuff, your graphics processor. So let's go ahead and enable that. And it already gives us a little bit more of an improvement, about uh, almost a little more than uh, 10 frames per second in some cases. And the last thing for improving your frames per second that won't detract from how objects in the world look is your view distance. This could be uh, controversial for some people who say it has to always be maxed, but if you don't mind, you could always try turning it down a little. I find that 7 is a nice sweet spot where it hits a very good increase to your frames per second and also doesn't detract from your view distance too terribly much. Let's go ahead and do that.
So it hasn't detracted too, too much. Yes, it has brought a little bit of fog in, but our frames per second is now around 120, mid-120s even. We have almost reached the point where we're ready to double our frames per second. And as you'll see, the objects in the world have not really changed in quality that much. So these have just been a few of the large improvements you can make. You could always tweak everything if you want, but the rest of what's available won't have as big an impact as the ones I've just shown you. Now before I move on to the next section of the video, reducing your load times, I'm going to go ahead and turn everything back to its highest settings. And wait till it levels out again at around 67 or so. Okay, we're back to the way we were. I will log out and I will move to Dalaran, Legion Dalaran, which will have a lot more people and a lot more to render. There's a lot more clutter in Dalaran. There's a lot more loading areas and whatnot. <coughs> a lot more uh, leveling zones and whatnot, I mean. So that wasn't too terrible a loading time. But, let's go ahead and try that again for one more quick baseline. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, as I mentioned with view distance, the less your game has to render, the faster it'll be. That also applies to loading time. Turn that down to 7 again, and the less your game will have to render, the faster it will load. But as one more quick little note, let us type this in. Slash console space world preload non-critical space zero. Make sure that is a zero and not a one. You might have to note the caps in here with the first letter of preload, non, and critical. There is a WTF folder in your World of Warcraft file that uh, will have a file in it called config.wtf. This line will be in there somewhere set to 1 as default. You can always adjust it from in there to make sure it's set permanently. But if you type it in here, it may set itself permanently. What this will do will make it so your game will load faster. How does it do that? Your game client by default will not allow you to enter into the world until everything is rendered. If you tell your game to allow you to... If you, if you tell this to preload non-critical items, it will make you wait. But if you tell it to not make you wait to preload everything, then it will allow you into the game world faster. So all it won't preload will be little doodads and clutter effects like chairs and flower pots, etc. It won't, um, it won't basically lead to you loading into a world that's got a lot of dead zones. That won't happen. So let's go ahead and hit enter. So that has now been triggered. We will log out and we'll try to log right back in. That loading time was cut in half from what I just had previously. And it does not take long for the clutter objects in the world to load in. So little things like this and whatnot, they will load in much quicker than you realize. Especially the ones that are closer to your character. It'll load things further away as, uh, as you enter into the world, but it won't take long. And the view distance makes a nice difference as well. So then you'll be able to hop into the game twice as fast as you were previously in some cases. So I really hope that this has been a nice uh, boon to help you improve your game's performance and get into the actual playing of the game quicker. And get uh, more performance in, uh, say, a raid or whatnot when there's a lot of particle effects going on. So that the... Uh, your lighting and all that isn't uh, suffering too much and causing your frames per second to drop. I really hope this has been a nice help for you guys. Um, at the same time, if uh, you would like, if you enjoyed this video or any of the other videos on my channel, please like and subscribe. It would help me out quite, quite a bit in making these videos. 
I'll catch you all next time. Until then, take care.